Good evening to the June 6, 2024 um, design review design review board meeting. Um, we can have a quick roll call. Board member Rosner. Here. Board member Odoricio. Here. Chair Kim. Here. Um, now it's the time for oral communication. So if you have anything to say that's not on the agenda, you have three minutes to come up to the mic and discuss a topic of interest. Do we have any uh, members in the audience who would like to make a communication? How about online? No, Chair Kim, there's nobody. Okay, and now it's time for a staff briefing. Is there any staff briefing? Um, I don't have any announcements, but the next item is the election of chair and vice chair. So I just wanted to take a minute to thank um, Chair Kim for your dedication um, and your time with the board this year. So thank you. Thank you. Um, anybody would like to make a nomination for, do we do the vice chair or the chair first? Chair? Whichever you'd like. Any nominations for the chair? I'll nominate um, Brian Chong. Any second? Second. We'll have a voice vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Hearing none opposed, the motion passes with all three members who are present and they're two abstaining because they're absent. Um, and then now we'll have a nomination for the vice chair. I nominate Alex. <laughs> Maybe you'd like to second. Oh, motion. second. <laughs> okay, we'll have a quick voice vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. All who are present, all three who are present, um, voted in favor. So I would like to give over the gavel to vice chair Rosner. Sorry, you might have to bear with us for one second while I read this uh, this paper. Um, I think with that, we'll move on to the public hearings. Um, first up is... Vice Chair, can I interrupt you really quickly? Sure. Um, can we look at the minutes uh, first, yes. please? Thank you. Um, we'll move on to the minutes from... May 16th, um, would anyone like to make any changes to the minutes? I'd like to make a motion to adopt the minutes from May 16th, 2024, as is. Second. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Not opposed. The um, motion passes to adopt the minutes from May 16th. Uh, and now we will move along to the public hearings. The first up is... Uh, item number one, uh, three, Las Palmas. Um, if the applicant would like to come up, um, you have 20 minutes. Thank you, Vice Chair. I'm John Clough. I'm the architect on the project. And with me from my office is uh, Jagvania Torres Zavala, who's the lead designer on the project. Uh, this is, you know, we're getting started here. I want to start with an apology. We asked for a 650 square foot uh, lot coverage exception. We only need 528. Uh, so we need to make some corrections to those uh, numbers. Um, but it's, we're asking for a little bit less than what's in the, in the packet. So what we're looking at here is the proposed view of the home from Las Palmas. Uh, on the left-hand side is a renovation uh, that took place uh, on the right-hand side, we're proposing to sort of complete that renovation uh, with an addition and a second garage door below the addition. Uh, the idea is to add a second parking space and regrade the front landscape uh, to allow for additional street parking because there's an ADU in the existing uh, home, which is behind this door and window. 
and we want to be able to provide more parking on site so that the ADU is more marketable as an actual housing unit and that the um, neighbors won't lose parking. Here on the left, you see a planter box that's been designed by the civil engineer and the landscape architect to mitigate run any runoff uh, from the increase in the uh, lot coverage on the property. And these are existing photos of the home where you can see that the house is on a steeply sloping site. Uh, on the upper left, this is the location where the new addition will be, which is going to be a garage parking space with an elevator leading up to a work from home space and a gym at the upper level. On the lower right, you can see the house as it is now. It's, it's asymmetrical. This gable will be replicated here, over here on the right, as you can see in the uh, proposed view. As you can sort of tell from these slides, this is the rear, this is the side. Uh, there's not a lot of usable outdoor space on this lot. And that leads into these landscape improvements that we're requesting. Uh, Landable Landscape Architects provided a flat upper level, I'm sorry, I pressed the wrong button, upper level uh, at grade patio that is when you look at it from the side here uh, is, is above grade. Um, the retaining wall here is pretty tall, but it's required to create this flat usable outdoor space in the back. Um, landscape architect noted that there's several established oaks on the property, which almost will all be remaining in their natural state, unaffected by the work. But unfortunately, one oak tree is in the area of the addition and will be removed. And it's going to be replaced with uh, three 24 inch box Western redbud trees. Uh, the landscape architect also mentioned the trees that you'll see around the side of the property and at the rear were selected to be no more than 25 feet tall uh, on the sides and 20 feet at the rear at full maturity. And that was the idea there because we're on the hillside site is to protect views. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the water conservation measures. The landscape architect uh, designed complete drip irrigation system that complies with all WELO requirements. Uh, three inches of wood mulch everywhere and each plant will be installed with a raised soil edge uh, to detain runoff. This shows the side and the rear of the house and you can see the spaces here are not real usable outdoor space and hence the need for the uh, patio. The colors and materials in the project are meant to match what's there right now. So all, all match existing. Uh, and the uh, intention is to continue the original project from a few years ago, provide that symmetry, finish the house so that it looks more attractive from the street. Uh, to get into the more technical, this is the site. This is where the addition will take place. The addition um, the addition here, two-story addition, um, is within the setbacks and it is um, below the height limits by quite a bit. And all we're asking for is for extra lot coverage. Um, we have, um, unfortunately, the calculation box is wrong. We're not asking for 650, it's 528. Um, overall, we're proposing 29, 27 square feet of lot coverage and the allowable is 2399. Uh, this is the provision of new street parking uh, for the ADU and there'll be still driveway parking places and then two garage parking spaces. This is the existing plan now. You enter the home by going up the stair and entering through a sideways front door. Um, the shaded area is the ADU, it has a separate entrance to the front, but it doesn't have the dedicated parking space yet. Here with the addition, 
we're putting the front door down facing the street, creating an inside stairway and providing an elevator uh, for aging parents, aging in place, uh, and, and the longevity in the home. This is the existing uh, upper level plan. We're keeping the whole house intact, except for removing just that entry stairway. This is the proposed upper level plan where we have the new addition here on the right-hand side, a work from home space here, the elevator landing in a gym area here, which is a flex space and an elevator lobby, and then access out here to this new level outdoor usable uh, space. When we add up the um, floor area, we're 52 square feet over the allowable floor area. The uh, That having been said, as I mentioned earlier, the, set, the setback lines are respected. And as you'll see in the later slide, the height limit is as well. So uh, we're showing the steep slope of the lot in this section. This is out to the street. This is the garage and this is the upper level in the existing condition. And the blue line represents the height of the existing home. Here's the proposed section where the blue line is the same and it also represents the height of the proposed home. Uh, it's overall 21.5 feet tall out of a, what I believe is a 30 foot allowable. The stairs are brought inside. And the front door is facing the street. This is the existing side view of the house with the stairs going up. These area, this area back here has a lot of cross slope. So you come out from here, there's a small flat area and then it goes downhill around the house and there's not a lot of usable space. Here in the proposed version, this is the finished floor height, the blue line. We're stepping down just one step to a flat usable uh, area up at the top and required stairs to get to the side of the house, not required by law, but required practically speaking. Then a stairway here also to get from the garage, uh, sorry, from the driveway level here down to the grade. And I believe That covers it. Um, if there are no questions for the architect at this time, I would like to turn it over to the homeowners to say a few words before our time is up. Is that the proper protocol? Yep. Does anyone have any questions for the architect? I think I'll wait. No. I will return for questions. Uh, so I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Amy Marcus, who are the homeowners. Good evening. Uh, I'm Marcus Buchanan, joint owner with uh, Amy Ganaway here. Uh, thanks for taking the time this evening to listen to uh, um, our request for approval. Um, we've been a part of the Tebron community since 2011 and um, been an integral part of it. Uh, we bought the house in 2017 and uh, did a remodel and have subsequently uh, wanted to do what our original vision is. So uh, Amy, I'll take it away from here for sure sure we love the community and want to be able to age in our home and we want it to be accessible and safe um at this point in time we have two of our three living parents are in wheelchairs and um one of them happened recently in the past year so they're not able to visit us um in our home at this time so that's kind of part of the inspiration for the elevator was thinking that we want to be able to live in the house and now from a practical perspective um the reality is that's what it would take to be able to entertain and have our family come and stay with us um, for periods of time. Um, in addition, you could see what the staircase was like today out, outside and, and steep. And so even though we're young and youthful, uh, just from a safety perspective, feeling much better about having the enclosed um, staircase. 
And then um, additionally, as John already mentioned, um, it is important to us to be able to rent out the ADU without making any imposition on our neighbors. And so by having two additional um, spaces in front of the home on the private road, um, that allows our neighbors to park on their kind of side of the road. Um, so in essence, freeing up an additional space for the neighborhood to use and then having that the space for someone who would rent the ADU, um, whether it's a member of the community or maybe down the line, um, a caretaker um, years into the future, if that's what it would take for us to stay in the home. Um, so thank you so much for your consideration of our application. Anyone have any questions for the applicant or their architect? I do uh, some architectural questions. Would you um, mind just discussing, did you ever have any other thoughts of the location of the stairways? Are you talking about these uh, stairways that are being pulled, shown here on the pulled side? outside and, and the one that divides the garage space? Were there any other options other than what you presented? The, the I think what maybe you're getting at is the location of the stairway between two garage doors is unusual. Yes. Um, so that was just an, the nature of the phased project uh, with the project having been phased over time. The um, stairway was needed to access the home in the intervening years until this eventual phase could be brought to bear. Uh, so that's why the stairway ended up in that location. And the stairways, ex uh, the external uh, stairways here, they're not by code, but that you have to have them. But and it was hard for me to when I walked around the property to understand the, the the value of those. Is there any reason they start to encroach on the neighbors? Of course, is there any other option? Are they are they necessary? And is there any other option for them? Uh, some stair of some kind would be necessary to be able to walk around the property because the uh, braiding required to create a path from the backyard down to the driveway would be pretty extreme. It would end up causing a retaining wall at the property. So you didn't do that? Okay. Yeah. And so that that this was the way to minimize as much as possible the grading at to the edge of the lot without trying to make a steeper property line retaining wall and disrupt the neighbor's property. And have you had any discussion with the neighbors on that side of uh, we did have five letters of support, and I'm not sure if that was including, that. including and that they are neighbor. included in that. Thank you. Yeah, and that adjacent neighbor on that side also owns four homes in the neighborhood, so um, she was agreeable um, to it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Any questions? All right. Uh, thanks very much. Thank you. Um, now is the time we'll move to um, uh, any public comments. Um, we'll start in the room. You'll have three minutes. Seeing none in the room, is there any online? No, Vice Chair. All righty. Um, the applicant has five minutes uh, if they so wish to say anything else. Otherwise, you can yield. You. All right. Thank you. Um, at this time, we'll um, deliberate amongst our, uh, the board. Um, does anyone want to kick us off? So they're asking for two variances. One is a lot coverage. And I presume that the lot coverage staff, you can help me do the calculation. It's half of the um, new raised surface it has to count for that because of the way that it's graded. So um, and then there's another variance for the rear setback to encroach the rear setback line. And I can make the findings of um, the four findings for each of those variances. So I think I can support this application as is. Yeah, I find no reason not to. Yeah. Uh, I'm in alignment with both my board members. Um, I think you know, given the existing structure and the slope um, of the property um, and really just making uh, some space in the patio more safe uh, to use. I don't think it changes the existing um, functionality of it. Um, I can definitely find, um, uh, make the findings for the variances. 
So with that, yes. I'd like to make a motion to adopt their draft resolution that this project is categorically exempt from CEQA um, as is, if anybody, yeah. So that's my motion. A second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Um, can we do a voice vote? All in. Do you mind adding that you can make the findings for the two variances as part of yeah. the motion? Sorry, yes, and I, I can make the four findings for the two um, variances as well. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, all opposed? Unopposed. Um, now what do I say? Uh, three to zero um, and two uh, board members who are absent, um, we pass the resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we will move on to the second agenda item, which is um, 4719 Paradise Drive. Um, the applicant um, has 20 minutes. Sorry, it'll take just a second to get this up. Thank you, board. My name is David Holscher from Holscher Architecture, and my daughter Hannah Holscher is behind, who's part of this project. Um, I'm going to start with a brief history of this project. Um, it started in 2015, and that was the blue design, and they had the driveway from above, and that driveway really didn't work very well. And so this project you're seeing right now, we did not change a thing, was approved on the February 21st, 2019 design review meeting. Like I said, exactly the same. We didn't want to step on any toes. So we're quickly going to go through the project because it has not changed. So this is the first, um, go back to the other one. The key to this design was putting the driveway in the center to have it curve up and to have the driveway entry low enough to have a safe driveway and a correct slope. So that was the beginning parameter that kind of drove the project. And as you can see on the top um, section, that is the cut. So we have the driveway is dug down to create a safe driveway. And then the other one is another section through the project. This is the main floor plan, and you can see the steps down on the right to the garage with the infinity pool. Again, nothing has changed. This is the upper floor plan uh, with the decks wrapping around. And again, this is kind of stepping back, kind of per the design review guidelines. This is just some aerial pictures in the southwest elevation. As you can see, the main level and then the top level, which is the master bedroom, step back. It's a relatively steep slope. We have a fair amount of vegetation to block basically the pool and et cetera from the roadway. This is kind of how much was cut in. The, the top is the Northwest elevation, which is basically the top floor or the second floor, which is connected to the hillside behind. And if you look on the Northeast elevation, you can see it step back and part of our Discussion in 2019 was eliminating a lot of windows on that side, so we would not um, have issues with the neighbor. We've gone through the design review process. This is the picture from the front. More pictures from the front. As you can kind of see, see the stepping back and kind of the integration of the stucco and wood to kind of break up the massing. Beautiful pool. I want to swim there someday. And then this is a lighting plan, all down lighting and worked with the neighbors to keep it contained kind of inside our parameters. And then our material board, again, has not changed. Black aluminum windows, gray stucco wall, wood siding, and the jet and a single ply window on top, I mean, roof on top. And that's kind of it because this is 
we missed it by a year to put in perspective. Any questions for the architect? So this is what we adopted exactly the same. Exactly. I I, I looked at it and I was like, yeah, Let's... get that get that microscope out because we did not really want to change it just because it passed. Thank you. And and that's true with this the line of the uh, driveway uh, gr grade has not changed either. One hundred percent. That's that. Yeah, the line okay. of the driveway grade, the whole the way it had to circulate is was kind of the like I discussed the key parameter, and we did not move it change an inch. That. Yes, please. Okay, that that was one part wasn't clear to me when I was looking. Thank you. And I guess to tack on that, what about the fence material? Was that as is from the previous? As is, and a lot of that was determined. We have a letter with our, basically our north neighbor that we have to put a deer fence up before construction with planting. That's a pretty complicated letter that was signed with the previous owner that we are doing as part of this project and never changed. So yes, we've had a lot of discussion concerning the planning and the fencing. And a lot of that was a discussion with the north neighbor also. Can you maybe give a little bit of background on the material selection for that fencing? And well, I have the exact. It's it's an agreement. So, uh, a six foot deer fence along the property line between the two homes fence would be built before construction starts. Lines will be planted eight feet on center at the fence. There'll be a built up retaining wall at the bulkhead. Three trees of 17 foot height shall be planted in the area between the existing fence and the bulkhead. The trees shall be of any species agreeable to the chens before construction. 24 bushes will be planted between the two properties. The species shall be portocarpus or approved equivalent. The bushes shall be 15 gallon container before construction. All of the above will be at the expense of Goodview LLC. It's been... And this is your the, the West neighbor? Uh, the neighbor to the it's north, north, it's hello. Okay, so this is 100% part of it. We haven't changed it. We've had a lot of discussions in 2019 and worked this out. It's so north, so the other side of paradise is that right? No, it's it's the it's the house that goes, yeah, okay, I know which one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's the, the okay. one that has the driveway right at the apex there, okay, yes. So this is that was again all part of our design review process. Okay, thank you for the context. Sure. And it one is. more, just uh, the history of the, the delay. What's gone on the last five years? Uh, we had COVID. We had a lot of things going on. We had a client who was moving about, and a lot of it's just life. I think we, the perfect term would be a lot of life went on, and we're have the working dogs, and we can't wait to get started. Sorry, my phone keeps. Um, uh, thank you. Any other questions before we move on to public comments? No. Uh, seeing none. Um, thank you. Very thank much. you. Um, we'll move to anyone of the public um, starting in the room. Um, we have our first uh, first speaker. Good evening. How are you? Thank my you. Uh, wife Cindy and I live at forty seven thirty seven. Paradise Drive with the handwritten uh, conditions that were attached to the original permit with the architect gentleman said that there were no changes, which is, I assume that when they bought the property from the Tweeds, they inherited these plans that expired, so they're trying to get them back up again. Uh, whether they build them or not or sell it is none of our concern, but we want to make sure the conditions that were set forth in the approval in 2019 is attached exactly as it is. Um, so I don't have a copy of what he just read. I assume it's the same, but it wasn't. Uh, the gentleman, Batars, came over to our house, gave us some plans, but it wasn't a full set with conditions from the Tiburon and what we agreed on. So we would like to have that. Uh, number two, uh, uh, after they got the permit, we looked into the driveway issue, and it has to deal with the uh, city of Santa uh, Marin County because of uh, we live right there and we see all the traffic conditions. Somebody drove off around the other corner again. And that's the issue, maybe not for you all, but it's just a concern because we know what happens around that corner. This multiple cars have gone off. In fact, 
Jeez, I saw a neighbor to the other side. I don't remember about a year ago, somebody drove off again. Well, not even that, huh? like six months ago. So it's just a concern. Uh, I'm not here to be the traffic cop, but as a safety issue. Um, third, there's some big rocks that I mentioned, the Batars. That are, I, I'm sure the design took account in, about these giant boulders in there. If they had to move those boulders or... I mean, I'm not sure you could dynamize <laughs> rocks that size, but just a noise situation. Um, and then lastly, it's just really uh, my the neighbor that lives across from them, Annie Builder, who's not well, uh, asked me to, uh, she sent an email and asked me to read it. She was just concerned mostly about the uh, construction noise and where would they park to do that. It happens all over Chivron, I'm sure, but uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to read her emails. Very short, but basically, she could send it to you by email. I saw that we can, but we have to be here today to do that. So, do you want to hear it or not? Um, you have twenty seconds if you want to summarize. Wanna read it, okay? <laughs> okay, this is Fanny Builder at uh, forty-seven twenty-six Paradise. So I will not be able to join you tonight. I think your concerns are valid about the dust and noise. I share with them as well. I also wonder about the work, worker parking, their access to the property, as until it seems to be a preferred parking staging area for much of the equipment used for the near and constant road and tree work that we have been seeing and hearing in the past few months. This is dangerous so on so many levels. Until it's below my house, 4726. Until it's, over the years, there have been some hits and many near misses of cars parked, blah, blah, blah. Treacherous. All right. Okay. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Uh, anyone else? Hi, my name is Ian Kerwin. I'm, uh, I guess, the uh, owner of the property to the south of this development. Uh, I'm new to Tiburon, and so I haven't had any opportunity to review any drawings, design maps. Otherwise, I'm, and uh, I guess I'm guessing this is an approval meeting. Uh, so there must be some level of a, a statutory time that I have the ability to review, like, for example, all these written hand documents that I've never seen before. Uh, so that's my first comment. Uh, second comment is, uh, I, I guess their story poles have been put up on the property. 100% uh, of the story poles were carried across my property uh, from contractors parking on my property and created tracks and uh, damage to some of the land down there. I want to inquire about what happens to a staging area. There's a, it's a large development. There's gonna be a lot of delivery trucks, a lot of uh, uh, flatbed trucks type things. There doesn't seem to be any access to the lot right now. Uh, so I need to know what, what, what would be the intent for a staging area of that area. Uh, the second thing or third thing I would uh, echo what George is saying there, um, the speeding on that section of the road is incredible. There is not a single speed limit sign anywhere on that part of paradise. I call it the forgotten part of paradise drive. Um, uh, the routinely, uh, I, I've clocked people. I have a little radar thing. I've clocked people at about 45 hitting that section there. It's a T-junction off of uh, uh, Paradise K and there's a lot of traffic there. So I just want to know what happens when we add a lot of delivery trucks, a lot of extra contractors and so on and so forth. And, and I echo everybody's concern about dust and noise. So, but primarily, uh, do I have the ability to uh, time-wise look over these drawings and so on, or is this it? I, I think um, maybe just to, for the public, um, the, the role of the design review board is to- Yeah, I think you can make the comments during the thing, but not, not now. Okay, I, I'm just new to the area. I, I bought the, the property to the south in 2021, I think it was. So I haven't had the opportunity to be aware that this development was under place. Yeah. Would you state your name again, please? Uh, yes, my name is Ian Kerwin. I live at 4709 Paradise Drive. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, uh, anyone else uh, from the audience in person? Seeing none, is there anyone online? No, Vice Chair. 
Okay, um, then we will give the applicant uh, five minutes to um, address any uh, thing um, he or she wishes. Hey, I truly apologize. I thought the Putars visited you and gave you drawings. Okay. I think if we'll adjust the Okay, uh, I thought that, that we discussed with them, they were in charge to go and talk. That should have been my job. Um, one thing is uh, OSHA obviously has the issue with dust control, water, et cetera, et cetera. That's which we have to follow a construction site. I am not the contractor for this, but I think the method that I would use would you would build the road first, you'd grade the road one and create the flat spot that existed at the driveway for staging and parking. So everything would be on site. Right now that can't happen because we don't have approval, but you would design and build the dirt and gravel road, which would get everybody up to the site and park everybody and not have the issue uh, with the neighbor, which I apologize. I had no idea that happened. I, I truly apologize. So that would be our methodology. Uh, the driveway was approved. We had a driveway study for distance, et cetera, with the County Marin. The County Marin is where we're now getting the permit for that driveway. It's taken years to do. Uh, uh, so it, it is legal. It's far safer than our neighbors. And I, you know, life's imperfect. You, you only have so much of a site to put in the driveway, put in the middle so it had the best sight lines both directions. And we worked hard with civil engineers to come up with a proper methodology there. Thank you. Thanks very much. Do we have any other questions for the applicant? Uh, no, I have none. Uh, any others? Okay. Uh, seeing none, we'll now deliberate amongst the board. Um, I'd like to have staff questions and procedures. Um, if there is a design review board, um, des design review agenda, are you legally required to provide notification within 300 feet of the of the property? <laughs> yes. Um, so the agenda packet is made available 72 hours before the meeting. And then uh, the notice of the public hearing and what will be discussed is sent is put in the arc um and then also sent to uh all homeowners within 300 feet of the subject uh of the subject property that's really helpful and um and then in terms of just want to clarify our scope and our purview as a design review board we don't just just want to confirm we don't discuss means and method of construction we don't we don't really have a comment on general conditions and general requirements that architects usually specify our purview is specifically the design of of the, of the building in accordance to the code your discretion is over the findings you have to make so in this case it is um the design review of this of this project. So you are free to impose, you know, conditions on the design, as you know, but you're correct. And, and just to clarify that, then, then this is a whole discussion, which is very important, brought up about the staging area. Who's who uh, makes comments about that or wants to, wants to make sure that that takes place? I would presume it's a, it's a building department. Building department. Yeah. Building department. It, it has to go exactly. through the building department. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We, we just don't. Yeah. And I have one other question just to follow up on this. Uh, if if there is a thought that a neighbor has uh, not been contacted or as uh, Mr. Corwin brought up, uh, is there any way to, um, I guess, uh, address some of the issues he brought up about his <laughs> notification about the project or his concern? We can discuss if... if uh... If a property owner that's a neighbor did not have notice of the meeting, um, we can we can address that. Or, or do you have something to say? Oh, okay. Okay. I would presume the building department and the planning department actually has the list of of everyone who has been contacted by address. Is there any way to confirm that everyone was? I mean, you can't really confirm whether they received it, but you can confirm that it was sent. I can go get a copy of the notice and all of the names, um, addresses that it went to for you right now. Okay, thank oh, you. That would be really helpful. I'm sorry, we're we're um, 
we're closed to the public at this time. So yeah. Any other questions for staff or the applicant? I have none. Okay, uh, seeing none, I think we will now deliberate amongst- Oh, actually I have a, another clarification. In the draft resolution, can we append the agreement between the neighbors or is that a private letter um, agreement that cannot be appended to the draft resolution? Amanda, you answer that one. In the previous iterations of this approval, and I left to go get the file and it grew legs and I cannot find it, there was a copy and the previous conditions of approval do reference that letter. Okay. Um, we, we are allowed to do that. Yeah. I mean, when the this initially was reviewed, that was one of the things that was discussed. So the holsters did incorporate all of the, I think, all of the items that they requested as part of the plans. Um, but we can still include reference to that letter. Okay. If you can and I do have a tell us how we reference that, <laughs> the letter. <laughs> sure. We need to, we, yeah, we don't have the letter. This is one from 2015, correct? So yeah, 2015. So that's, yeah, and it's in the file, which again, I went to go find. Yeah. So we do have a copy of this letter and then i i would can i put this in the back so that the public can view this I sure think. yeah absolutely okay okay uh, i think now we will deliberate anyway, um, I think so. yeah so i was part of the design and review board that did approve this exact same design um with the condition of the uh of what, the contents of the private letter so i um I understand that there's all these uh, construction means and methods sort of questions, but we, that's just out of our realm. And I think that just has to be set with the building department. And I urge neighbors to contact the building department to to work together and also to work together with the construction team as selected. But I, I'm, I'm I'm ready to approve this because we we did spend um, a couple of rounds on this. So, okay. Yeah. Is there any thoughts from? No, the only concerns I brought up were, I uh, say, are being addressed by other departments. It sounds like we have a very uh, attentive group that's working, and it sounds like that would be a, a non-issue. I'm, I'm sure you would bring that up. Yeah. And, and of course, work with Mr. Kerwin on that as well. Um, yeah, I, I went to the site. Um, I viewed the, the, the plans. I think the, the gener generally in support, um, I think the house looks great. My one minor pet peeve, which I will not make an issue, but maybe an encouragement as development continues is the the fence on Paradise Drive is not my favorite. The deer, the black mesh deer fence, especially with the pool over it, given that elevation change to me. I've seen a few projects in the neighborhood that has kind of gone in that direction. And Personally, if that's my home and I'm in that pool, I'd want a little bit more screening and privacy, but given the history of uh, this approval and um, uh, it going through the board and, and that being maybe just a personal preference, um, I wouldn't stipulate a condition. It's just something to think about um, as, uh, as the house gets built. Okay. Could you, so you can confirm that it was sent to us. It has a, um the list of everywhere it went. And, and it's within 300 miles of the center point of the property. 300 foot radius? Yep. So what we do is we go through a, a Marin Maps, which is a county-based um, program, and any property that is even a smidgen within the 300 foot radius gets put on this list. Okay. No, there's no, there's not. No, um, it's up to it's up to the chair to open it up um, to the public. I'm not inclined to reopen to public comment. Um, I think there are, um, as we've seen from the the list of notifications sent, um, uh, staff did did what was appropriate. I do, you know, there are other avenues. Um, 
uh, if we approve it, there are other avenues, um, you know, to, to appeal for it. And I, I think we'll- The Heron piece that should be attached to the permit was not in any of our documents. I know it was back in 1990. I think, I, I'm sorry, we, we can't have- you know, yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna um, so check on the condition. Point. Sorry, we're, we're gonna- we're going to check on our ability to add condition in our resolution. So we're going to discuss that with staff right now. Um, I, I think we're going to, we're waiting to, to find out um, what was previously uh, indicated in the prior resolutions. Um, so I'm going to ask staff um, what, how that letter was incorporated in the prior resolutions. There actually was not a prior resolution when this was adopted. It was just a condition of the approval and it referenced that. I unfortunately do not have the wording in front of me, but a copy of that, the conditions of approval when it was approved in 2019 referenced the letter from like, I think it's May 16th, 2015. Okay. So we have the ability to condition yeah. the approval on the okay. letter. Okay. And we still have that on record. We can reference it as part of the motion great think that. Okay. thank you so it's may 16th 2015 okay you could say you could just incorporate the handwritten letter that was available yep. to the okay. clerk at the meeting yep. to the resolution as okay. a condition yep. of the approval great. thank you i'd like to make a motion to adopt the draft resolution um uh, amending it so that it makes reference to the um the conditions set forth in the may 16th 2015 handwritten letter that was um, a private letter between um, the two neighbors um, and that this project is categorically exempt from CEQA and I don't think there's any variances. So as, as I'm so sorry, I just want to clarify, did you also want to include a condition regarding a construction management plan prior to the building permit issuance? They will have to, be, aren't all, all properties subject yeah. to a construction? I mean, they have to meet yeah. The, the the requirements of dust noise and all that mm -hmm. and hours and it seems redundant to do that because sure. <laughs> it's not within our purview so yeah thank you thanks for clarifying do we have a second second all right we will do a let's do a roll call vote i think uh to adopt the motion that board member kim just said Board member Odoricio? Except. Board member Kim? Aye. Vice Chair Rosner? Aye. The motion passes to adopt the resolution. Thank you. Thank you so much. On to, um, on to our last uh, agenda item of the evening, 90 Sugarloaf Drive. The applicant has 20 minutes. This is your pointer. And then. Um, let me have, she's, once she gets it set up, this will be how you scroll through the next slide is the down button. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this will be brief. <laughs> uh, good evening, board members. My name is David Marlot, DNM Architecture. Uh, with me is Dr. Payam Baratnia, uh, who is the owner of 90 Sugarloaf Drive. The item on your agenda is a variance for some modifications to an existing uh, automobile, a pre-existing automobile gate, which we can see in the picture on the right, uh, serving the property that had the effect of raising the overall height of the gate from six feet to just over eight feet. That's a picture of the gate. Uh, the gate, as you can see in your packet, is about 186 feet from Sugarloaf Drive the public way, and so not visible from any public way, and the project also has the support of the immediate neighbors. These are just some pictures showing on the right the view uh, towards Sugarloaf and from Sugarloaf that the, the gate is, is, is 
very discreet to say the least. Um, Dr. Baradnia and his wife, Shadi, Dr. Shadi Shamshigaran, bought the property in 2021 to serve as their full-time primary residence for their family. Extensive renovations were undertaken in 2021 until late 23. The auto gate and the driveway serve as the sole vehicular access for the property, but more importantly, due to the steep hillsides on both sides, they also provide the only pedestrian egress in case of fire or other emergency. And these are some pictures on the right of the new gate and same pictures on the left of the previous gate. So you can see that it's uh, very similar, just one is sort of larger and more in style with the, um, with, with the uh, remodeling project that was taking, undertaken. The sole reason that Dr. Baradnia raised the gate to eight feet was to accommodate a pedestrian door where it would need a variance because he did not understand that the seemingly logical modification when changing the gate required a variance and a permit. However, the steep terrain on both sides of the site is an unusual condition that prevents the owner from enjoying a safe environment that provides egress to the public way as otherwise provided by the building codes. The modification in no way diminishes the value of or in any way compromises surrounding properties. Indeed, it is not even visible from the public street and both neighbors support it as you've seen in some emails that were been shared with you by staff. Finally, due to the very unusual terrain that, well, that is very steep on both sides of the property, then for, so, and the practical need to provide egress, this variance is extremely specific. And so it does not create a precedent for other variances. So based on all of that, we ask for your support and Dr. Bradney and I are available for your questions. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, does anyone on the board have any questions for the applicant? I have a question. So the um, the gate right there is at eight feet and then on, on the right-hand side in that image, is that up to eight feet as well? Uh, that how portion. does that how does that work? I mean, I'm looking at Samantha because it's it's sort of like two pieces on top of each other. So, yeah, are you asking if they're two separate variances or if we're looking at it as one structure? I think we consider it one structure because it's the piers or okay, the posts. so it's covering not only the the movable gate but also on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Any other questions? I'm good. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. At this time, we'll open up to the public if anyone has any public comment. Seeing none in the room, is there any online? There are none, Vice Chair. All right, thank you. Um, seeing that there is none, we will invite the applicant uh, if he, he or she wishes um, for another, it's not obligated to, uh, but you have five minutes. Oh, no, I have nothing to add. Okay, thank you. Thank thanks you. very much. Um, at this time, we'll uh, deliberate amongst the board. Does anyone want to start? I'm in support of it. I can make the findings to um, for the variance to increase the fencing and the gate to eight feet. I have no no issues with that at all. Good design makes sense. Yep, uh, I to agree. It is a beautiful gate. Um, I saw it this morning. So, with that, would anyone like to make a motion? Just motion to accept. Uh, and that is categorically exempt from CEQA. <laughs> and we can make the vote there. It's fine. I second it. Um, we can do a, a voice vote. Um, all in favor? Of, aye. 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 All opposed? Seeing none, um, the board approves uh, three to zero um, with two absent um, for this project. Good. We're adjourned. Thanks very much. Thanks for bearing with us. Thank you very much. Well, that surprised me. <laughs> <laughs>